We're now going to cover thiazide diuretics. And this also will include thiazide-like diuretics. Uh, so the prototypical drugs that we're going to be talking about are going to be chlorothiazide, chlorothiazide, and then metalazone. These are going to be your two prototypical uh, thiazide or thiazide-like diuretics. So uh, what are we talking about? We're, we're going to be talking about uh, diuretics that work on the distal convoluted tubule. So remember we have our glomerulus, proximal, descending, loop, ascending, distal, convoluted, and collecting duct. Uh, we're going to be talking about our distal convoluted tubule here. So let's, let's take a look at the mechanism of action of a thiazide diuretic. We've got our big cell here, and I'll need to make this smaller. Okay, so we've got a lumen, and we've got a interstitial. This luminal side, everything that gets stuck in the lumen will get excreted into the blood. We'll have more cells like here, and more cells here. We're just taking a little snapshot of a single cell uh, lining that lumen. So we've got the luminal side and we've got the sodium potassium pump. The sodium potassium ATPase. What it's going to do is it's actively going to secrete sodium into the interstitial space. It's going to actively pump potassium back into the cell and it's going to require ATP in the process. We've also got another channel here. It's going to put calcium calcium 2 plus uh, I think I should probably redo that one calcium 2 plus and it's gonna pump it out and allow us to reabsorb it we're gonna allow calcium to be reabsorbed we're also gonna use that by driving the sodium gradient so we just created a sodium gradient by actively using ATP to pump it out of the cell now we're going to use that sodium gradient to drive it into the cell. In the meantime, we're going to bring calcium from inside that cell into the rest of our body, so we reabsorb it. Got a third Let's pump here. We're going to take calcium, and we're going to exchange it for a hydrogen ion. And this is going to require an ATP as well. So this is going to be our sodium, or not our sodium, our calcium hydrogen antiporter, meaning they're in the opposite direction. Uh, we've got some other channels that we have to worry about. This is all in the distal convoluted tubule, remember. So we've got sodium, we've got chloride. Both are going to be driven into the cell through this channel, uh, through the membrane. So we're creating our sodium gradient. We're pumping sodium out into the interstitial space. So that creates like a little vacuum inside the cell for sodium. It's going to drive the sodium that's in the lumen to be reabsorbed. That's how we reabsorb sodium. And where sodium goes, water goes. So that is going to be how we reabsorb water, is we're going to actively pump out the sodium. That means we're going to draw in sodium from the lumen into the cell. That'll mean water will follow. So this is our sodium chloride symporter. Then also we've got a channel. We've got a channel here. And this is going to be called the TPVR5 channel, the TPVR5 calcium channel. What this is going to do is it's going to allow us to move calcium into the cell. So look here, we're using ATP to actively drive calcium into the interstitial space, which creates a vacuum inside the cell. So we're going to use a calcium channel to bring calcium from the lumen into the cell so we don't lose the calcium. So why am I even covering? This is normal physiology right here. Well, for thiazide diuretics, thiazide diuretics are going to act in a couple different locations. They're going to act on this channel, the symporter. And they're going to inhibit this symporter. So if we can't bring sodium into the cell, water can't follow. Water will follow the sodium that's still in the lumen and will pee it out. So if we inhibit this channel, Sodium can't get reabsorbed. Also, we have an action here on this channel. And we're going to increase this channel's ability. 
I don't know why I wrote decrease, we're going to increase this channel's ability. We're going to be able to resorb, reabsorb more calcium. And as such, we're going to increase uh, this pump. And when we increase this pump through a thiazide diuretic, we're going to increase more calcium. So our net result is we're going to have decreased sodium. Increased sodium in the urine, however, we measure sodium in our blood. So we're going to have less sodium reabsorbed because we lose this channel, so all the sodium stays still in the lumen. We pee it out. So we're going to have less sodium in our bloodstream. Then we're also going to have increased calcium because, remember, we're activating this channel then, increasing the calcium, increasing the calcium, we reabsorb more. So that's good in someone with osteoporosis, for example, or with a calcium deficiency. Uh, the use, I'm going to get back to my medium size. We've got the use, so why do we use thiazide diuretics? Well, it's good for chronic heart failure, it's good as a diuretic, and it's the number one first line agent. Hydrochlorothiazide, chlorothiazide, whatever you want to give. Thiazide diuretics are typically used as a first line agent. I'm going to preface that by saying it's in the United States. Um, every country kind of has their own guidelines. Some prefer other diuretics. However, in the United States, it's been found that thiazide diuretics are going to be our number one line, first line agent for a non complicated hypertension. Okay, if they have heart failure, it's a different issue. Uh, we may start off with a different one. Uh, if they have other issues, however, this is going to be your number one starting point for a diuretic. Um, also, uh, it'll be used for calcium nephrolithiasis. So, uh, why? What is calcium nephrolithiasis? Simply meaning a kidney stone that is made up of calcium due to high calcium levels. If you have high calcium levels in the lumen, you can get calcium kidney stones. So what you'll be doing is you'll be giving a thiazide diuretic that'll decrease the luminal calcium and it'll decrease your chances of getting a calcium kidney stone. Okay. So let's move on to a different type of diuretic. 